Assalamu alaikum everybody. How are you all? Alright, so today we are going to study a very interesting topic. And this is uh, technically the second last topic of uh, the chapter endocrinology. Okay, so we have uh, today's topic is drugs that are acting on pancreas and uh, glucose homeostasis which are maintaining. Okay, alright. So, today we will be covering up insulin, okay, then we will cover uh, oral hypoglycemic agents, agents that increase blood glucose level, which are called hyperglycemics, okay. So, before I start uh, even talking about the drugs which are working uh, in metabolizing glucose, okay, and how exactly we are stimulating everything, okay? I think it's better to start from the basics that how exactly pancreas actually work, which are uh, the main glands, which is, which is the main gland that is controlling the blood glucose level, okay? All right. So basically, the pancreas, they're very uh, unique in a way because they are not only acting as the endocrine gland, but they are also acting as the exocrine gland, okay? So, if you look here, all right, so this is the pancreatic duct, okay? So, pancreat through the pancreatic duct in the duodenum, uh, digestive enzymes are released, all right? And along with that, we'll study today that how exactly pancreas act uh, by secreting uh, by secreting insulin, okay, and glucagon, and that's the place where they play their role as the endocrine glands, okay. Why exactly are they acting like that? Let's study that, okay. So this is the pancreas, all right. Uh, wait a minute, Asma, please shut the room. Fast, fast. Okay. So this is pancreas, okay? So if you look here, all right, so this is Asner cells, okay, that secrete the digestive enzymes, which are here, okay? And these are pancreatic aisles, okay, which are which we also call as aisles of Langerhans, okay? All right. So if you look here further, we have alpha cells and beta cells. How do they play a role in it uh, in the diffusion? Okay, let's talk about it. You see here these red things. Okay, these are the blood capillaries. Okay, so what happens is if you look here, all right, so we have this here is the beta cell. Okay, and if you look at the histological diagram, so uh, this is the pictogram actually. So if you look here, okay, so these which are not that prominently dyed, okay? So, uh, these one are the beta cells, all right? They're pretty dull in color. Uh, but when we look at the alpha cells, okay? So, alpha cells are like these, and we can prominently see the alpha cells here. Okay, everybody? So, uh, when exactly insulin is released, when exactly glucagon is released, okay? All right, so first of all, if you have low blood sugar, then glucagon will be released, okay? And if you have too high uh, blood sugar, so insulin is released, so sugar to cells for energy storage, all right? Now we have classification of drugs that we can take in order to uh, get rid of diabetes, okay? Not get rid, but to control it okay so when we want to control the diabetes if we have developed okay or we already had it when we were born so there are two main classes which is insulin and then we have non-insulin diabetic drugs when we talk about insulin so these are used basically to treat di di diabetes mellitus type 1. Please make it sure that you know that there are two types of diabetes which we usually talk about. 
one is diabetes mellitus and other one is diabetes insipidus in di diabetes insipidus we have uh, uh, we have excessive thirst and we urinate a lot okay but in diabetes mellitus uh, the glucose levels are actually creating the problem all right so when we talk about insulin so we have three types of insulin that we can inject in the body one is rapid short acting one is intermediate acting and other one is long acting the non-insulin that anti-diabetic agents all right so they are these which we'll talk in detail okay so when i said what is type 1 and type 2 diabetes because if uh, if you remember i talked that in insulin when i want to take this insulin i prefer type 1 if i have type 1 diabetes and um, if let's say i have type 2 diabetes so i'll prefer these so let's dig in and let's study what is the difference in type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus. Okay, so in type 1 diabetes mellitus, pancreas, they do produce insulin, but it is in decreased quantity. Okay, you see only two insulin molecules. So decreased insulin in the blood vessels, uh, increased glucose due to low insulin. Why? What is the function of insulin? What does insulin do in your body? Tell me. I want to hear in the chat. G. I'm waiting for your answer. What is the role of insulin in our body? Why is insulin released by pancreas? Absorption of glucose. Absorption or conversion. So basically, the glucose is actually increased glucose, a level of glucose decrease in blood. Okay. All right. So let's say if I am healthy, okay, if I'm a healthy person, I have no problem of diabetes or something, okay? Because I tell you what, when I was a student, uh, I don't know why. Uh, I don't know if the, the that particular soda company actually did uh the marketing it was a marketing stunt or what i don't know but anyways when i was a student there was a trend and all of a sudden i would hear every other person telling me that uh faiza if you would drink this particular brand of drink okay while studying so you will actually study more because uh you know there would be a lot of glucose which would be released into your body and your cells need a lot of glucose, your brain would need a lot of glucose when you're studying, and you'll actually study more. I all, uh, of course, I bought the drink, I drank it, and trust me, after an hour, I was uh, sleeping, okay? Even though I was totally fresh uh, earlier, and later on, uh, you know, I was very disturbed that, oh my God, Yes, I studied very well for one hour, but later on I was totally exhausted and I slept and why was that I, you know, started to dig into it. So I actually got to the answer that when I drank that uh, drink, okay, so as a result, what happened in my body, of course, glucose levels shoot it up. As a result, my body produced a lot of insulin and the insulin actually started to decrease the glucose content in my body. So after an hour, I had reduced amount of glucose in the body. And of course, then the other hormone, which is glucagon, would be working to, um, you know, uh, uh, bring it to the normal level. Okay. But obviously, because of lack of, uh, because not lack, because of uh, decreased amount of glucose in the body, I was sleepy, right? So you, that is the reason, right? Why when we eat food, we get relaxed, right? Okay, all right. So decrease insulin in blood uh, vessels, okay? So increase glucose to lower the increase glucose due to low insulin. So muscles in, unable to 
use insulin wait a minute what am i saying <laughs> muscles unable to use glucose due to low insulin okay and because of which of course uh, the effects could be produced now there's type 2 diabetes okay uh, that is the uh, uh, that is the condition in which the pancreas are producing sufficient insulin okay which is secreted in the bloodstream but insulin resistance has developed now okay and it is not that that total insulin resistance would be there but insulin would be resisted okay by the muscles so they are not able to uptake it and when they are not able to uptake it so obviously cellular respiration cannot happen and when cellular respiration can, cannot happen obviously the person would feel lethargic right okay so uh type 1 and type 2 diabetes so in type 1 diabetes it, it usually develops during the childhood but can develop at any age so this is the type of diabetes which children can have okay uh risk factor it could be of course due to a family history uh, symptom is bedwetting, blurry vision, frequent urination, increased appetite and thirst, mood changes and irritability, tiredness and weakness, unexplained weight loss. The prevention is not very specific and treatment is insulin injection. Now, the type 2 diabetes, okay, so people can develop it at any age, but majority of the times, the elderly people who are 40 and plus okay they develop it uh now the risk factor is of course if a person is overweight or if they have sedentary lifestyle uh, then of course a family history and then high blood pressure can also be a reason why a person can develop this okay symptoms increased appetite and thirst dark patches on armpit and neck frequent urination blurry vision, tiredness and weakness, unexplained weight loss. Of course, all of these are uh, uh, very much evident when a person can have, uh, uh, you know, decreased amount of glucose uptake by the body cells. But why exactly a person has a blurry vision? You see, because the lens, okay, uh they develop they they develop cataract okay there there's high chances of developing cataract so obviously cataract will develop but before cataract development uh there would be uh, the hardening of the lens okay so first of all the blurry vision will be there and then uh cataract will be there right all right then uh prevention healthy lifestyle please adopt that especially due to the quarantine and lockdown situation and we are of course scared of coronavirus so we are not moving out not going out and not socializing as we used to do before so please develop some uh, habits at home okay uh, because if you invest something in yourself invest uh, you know some time just allocate some time for yourself and um, have fun, okay, by doing exercises. So you can actually prevent this type 2 diabetes later in life. Uh, and then uh, the treatment is healthy living, possible insulin support, and of course, oral hypoglycemic agents that we'll study right now. But before we'll study the oral hypoglycemic agents, we'll first of all study about the insulin, all right? The insulin, which we will use if somebody has developed type 1 diabetes okay all right so first of all let's study about the structure and synthesis of insulin so insulin is a polypeptide hormone produced by pancreatic beta cell insulin consists of two chains polypeptide chains actually a and b you see a chain and b chain okay this is a chain and this is b chain all right linked by Two disulfide bridges so here is this one and here is this one okay all right then we have uh, human insulin contains 51 amino acids okay if you start to count them by pausing the video you can do that okay uh, then we have 
uh, bovine uh, insulin, insulin differs from human insulin at three amino acid sites. And, and I tell you, these amino acid sites are very uh, important, okay? That what kind of amino acids is present in what site? Because I tell you, if, if this valine is not present, okay, you, you can actually develop hemophilia, okay? So yeah, these amino acids are very important. So they can tell that what kind of a protein it is, okay? So what is bo bovine or bovine insulin? So this is the insulin produced by cow, all right? Okay. And then we have porcine uh, insulin differs uh, in only one amino acid. So this porcine is related to the pigs, all right? Okay. Then we have insulin is stored as a complex with zinc, okay? Now, if you look here, okay, if you look here, the zinc is actually holding uh, the entire insulin complex, okay? So, insulin is stored as a complex with zinc cation, okay? So, two molecules of zinc complex, uh, two molecules of zinc complex, six molecules of insulin, okay? So, two molecules of zinc are adhering to six insulin molecules. Okay, uh, then we have insulin synthesis and release are modulated by the following. Of course, if I, like I started my lecture by talking about the glucose, okay, that if somebody takes in glucose, high amount of glucose, so insulin would be released. So the most important stimulus is in glucose, okay. Then we have amino acids, fatty acids, ketone bodies also stimulate the release of insulin. Isles of Langerhans contain several cell types besides beta cells that synthesize and release peptide humoral agents, which are hormonal agents, so including glucagon and somatostatin that can modulate, modulate insulin secretion. Alpha adrenergic pathways inhibit secretion of uh, insulin. This is the predominant inhibitory mechanism. Okay. Uh, then we have Beta ad uh, adrenergic stimulation increases insulin release. Elevated intracellular calcium acts as an uh, insulin secretory gorge. Okay, so how exactly the insulin is actually doing its work? You can see here in the GIF image that the insulin is attaching here and it is actually opening up the channel okay and then the glucose molecules are going inside glucose molecules are non-polar in nature but because they are uh, huge in size that is why they need uh, channels to go through okay all right <clears throat> so insulin binds to specific high affinity receptors with tyrosine kinase activity located in plasma membrane Wait. <coughs> Sorry. So, specific tyrosine uh, residues of insulin receptor become phosphorylated. Other substrate of phosphorylation include IRS14. Uh, the increase in glucose transport in muscle and adipose tissue is mediated by recruitment of hexose transport molecules, which is GLUT1 and GLUT4, okay, into the plasma membrane. Okay, so insulin alters the phosphorylation state of key metabolic enzymes leading to enzymatic action, activation or inactivation. Insulin reduces the transcription of several genes, involves in increasing glucose catabolism and specifically inhibits transcription of other genes involved in gluconeogenesis. Uh, uh oh, wait. Okay. So, what are the actions? Insulin promotes systemic uh, cellular potassium uptake. Okay. So, when we talk about liver, so insulin does all of these actions and it inhibits glucose production and increases uh, glycolysis then it inhibits 
glycogenolysis and it stimulates glycogen synthesis. It increases the synthesis of triglycerides, increases the protein synthesis. In muscles, it increases the glucose transport and glycolysis, increases glycogen deposition, increases protein synthesis. And of course, when we talk about adipose tissue, so it increases the glucose transport, increases lipogenesis and lipoprotein lipase. Uh, then it decreases the intracellular lipolysis. Pharmacological property is insulin has a half-life of 5 to 10 minutes. Insulin is degraded by hepatic glutathione insulin trust hydrogenase, which reduces the disulfide linkages between A and B chains, producing two biologically inactive peptides. Now let's discuss the insulin preparations which are available in the market, okay? So historically, insulin preparations were derived from bovine and porcine glands. So bovine insulin was removed from the U.S. market due to concern about mad cow disease. Uh, preparation of porcine insulin was stopped in 2005, okay? So why did he stop uh, what is the mad cow disease mad cow disease is a disease okay which is neuro uh, destructive okay so basically uh, the cows okay they develop abnormal uh, you know attitude and also uh, what happened like uh, they start to uh, have their weight loss and everything so of course it was a concern okay so and of course, there was a revolution and the revolution was production of insulin by the recombinant DNA technique. What is this technique? Can anybody tell me about it? Hmm. I'm waiting for you in the message in the chat box. Okay. And tell me what is the DNA recombinant technique? What is this about? Haji. What is it? I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. We take insulin human insulin gene and insert into bacteria. Wow, very good, Amna Fatma. Uh, yes, that is the way we do the recombinant. Okay, wait a minute. We have a message from Sara Rehan that add a strain of insulin to the DNA of bacteria, then DNA produces insulin. Okay, very good. You see, the thing is, we know that bacteria reproduces very quickly. Okay, and because of it, what do we do is we do not take the main DNA loop, okay? We take the plasmid, okay? We take a plasmid, okay? And then these are the smaller circular uh, DNA molecules, okay, within the uh, cytoplasm, okay, of a bacterial cell. So uh, what happens is that the bacteria, okay, let's, uh, let's say I had a plasmid, I cut it out, I inserted the human gene that produces... Uh, insulin okay and as a result what happens is uh, that as a result what happens is that the um, uh, insulin is being produced okay and then we give it and that's the recombinant dna technique okay so the other one is insulin preparations are often mixed to control blood sugar levels a single morning injection of a lente or ultra lente form is typically supplemented with preprandial uh, injections of a rapid acting product. So dosage regimens must be individualized. Okay. So what is preprandial? 
So this is that, that you take it before meals, okay? Okay, then we have insulin preparation. So we have, as we studied in the first, second or third slide that there are several types. So the rapid acting one is insulin uh, glulicin, insulin aspart and insulin lispro are human insulins that have been modified at one to two amino acids in the beta chain to increase their solubility. These insulin dissociate into monomers almost instantly upon a subcutaneous injection. They provide better postprandial control of glucose level than regular insulin, okay? So postprandial means after taking the meal, either it's a lunch or dinner, okay? Then we talk about the short-acting one. So short-acting one is the regular insulin uh, that is prepared by the recombinant human protein, okay? And then we have uh, intermediate acting, which is isophane insulin, okay? So it is prepared by precipitating insulin zinc complexes with protein, a mixture of basic peptides. So this slows absorption and extends the duration of action, okay? So the longer acting one are ultra lente insulin has a larger particle size than the lente product. So then we have a glargine insulin, which has a single amino acid in the A chain, A chain and two additional amino acids in the B chain that differ from the regular insulin. This causes it to form a stable, slowly dissolving precipitate upon injection. Then we have the Timur insulin, which has a 14 carbon fatty acid added to the A chain and an amino acid removed from the B chain. This also ca causes it to form a stable, slowly dissolving precipitate. Then we'll talk about the therapeutic uses. So insulin is used to treat all of the manifestations of hyperglycemia in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus. Most type 2 diabetes diabetics are treated with dietary changes and oral hypoglycemic agents. In serious cases of type 2 diabetes in which these treatments are inadequate to control the blood glucose level, insulin may be required. Okay? All right. So adverse effects are uh, hypoglycemia, which may occur from insulin overdose, insufficient caloric intake, strenuous exercise, or when combined with ethanol. So, uh, sequel include, sequel means that uh, the, the symptoms which we had from the other, uh, you know, diseases, okay? So, they include tachycardia, sweating, and sympathetic and parasympathetic actions that can progress to coma. Uh, then the other adverse effects are hypokalemia, anaphylactoid uh, reaction, which are the anaphylactic reactions. Then we have lipodystrophy or hypo, hypertrophy of subcutaneous fat at the injection site. So lipodystrophy is actually uh, development of the fat in one particular place, okay? Not overall, okay? And the other side effect is the weight gain. I am ending the meeting here. I want you all to join back and then we'll study about the oral hyperglycemic agents, okay? Join back instantly.